Hello students, in today's class we are going to learn about point defect in solids. So now when we talk about solids, we are talking about a solid state. And these solid state consists of different kinds of metals and non-metals which are solid because of the virtue of their atoms being in certain positions. Now these atoms contain of neutrons and protons in the middle and then electrons which are moving around in the orbit. But now at one particular point in a solid, so let's just take for example a cube over here. At one particular point, so let's take this as the point, if we have an extra electron or an atom or we have something which is missing from here, it will form a point defect. There are various kinds of point defect. Let's see them one by one. So over here you have point defects accounted for crystallization process. Now what exactly is crystallization process and why is it necessary? When you have a particular solid, one way of forming a solid is with the help of crystallization and it forms different kinds of crystals. So when we have a crystal solid, it forms with the help of crystallization and if the crystallization process, the process of it occurs at a very fast rate, that means from the liquid state to the solid state, if this happened at a very fast rate, then what will happen is it will lead to some kind of defect. These defects mainly happen due to the deviation of the arrangement. Now what arrangement? Of the particles. Now these particles can generally be atoms slash ions in ionic solids or electrons in metallic solids as well. So if any of these particles which are a part of solid but there is a deviation in the arrangement that means the arrangement is not done perfectly or completely then what happens is there are chances of it not becoming a proper solid and having some kind of defect and generally this defect is the point defect. In a crystalline solids, when the ideal arrangement of solids is distorted around a point atom, it is known as a point defect. So if you have one particular solid over here, let's just take this particular cube and you have one particular point over here and over here if there is some kind of distortion which is happening, it is known as a point defect. Let's see the types of point defect. Now there are three kinds of point defect but most of them are very interrelated to each other. You have a stoichiometric defect, Frankel defect and Schottky defects. Let's start off with the stoichiometric defects. Stoichiometric defect. In this kind of point defect, the ratio of the positive and the negative ions, that is the stoichiometry, and electrical neutrality of a solid is not disturbed. That means if I have 10 positive ions, I will have 10 negative ions and this will be as it is. So if I have anions and cations, always remember cations are positive ions, anions are negative ions. These will be well balanced and thus there will be no electronic effect over here. Sometimes it is known as an intrinsic or thermodynamic defect. Now this particular stoichiometric defect is now getting further divided into two types and the first type over here is the vacancy defect. If you see the vacancy defect over here, when an atom is not present in the lattice sites. Now what is the lattice side? The lattice side, so for example if you have a solid over here, lattice is nothing but the arrangement and these are different lattice sites. These are the positions. Another word for lattice site can be positions. Now which kind of positions? 3D positions in a 3 degree world in a three-dimensional world, then that lattice site is vacant and it creates a vacancy defect. Due to this, the density of a substance decreases. The second type of defect is interstitial defect. So now you have stoichiometric defect. In stoichiometric defect, you had vacancy defect. Now what was vacancy defect? You have a particular solid over here. In that particular solid, you have a particular position over here 
and something was supposed to fill this empty space this particular position but it is not there making a vacancy and it is known as a vacancy defect the other kind of defect that we are going to learn which is a part of stoichiometric defect is nothing but interstitial defect now what is interstitial defect mean in interstitial defect when an atom or molecule occupies the intermolecular space in crystals now what is happening now i have again solid over here and i have different molecules one molecule second molecule third molecule fourth molecule if you see this particular part in the middle this is this part which i have colored is nothing but intermolecular space this is an empty intermolecular space it is the space between all the different molecules so now if an atom or a molecule will actually occupy this particular part over here then it will lead to an interstitial defect in this defect the density of the substance increases so if i have to write a differentiation between both of them first i will explain what is a vacancy defect and then i will talk about the density so over here the density of that particular compound will decrease because there's a vacancy over here over here the density of this particular compound will increase because the empty space in the middle is also being filled up a non ionic compound mainly shows vacancy and interstitial defects an ionic compound shows the same in frankel and schottky defect as i said these are three different kinds of defects but all of them are interrelated and why do i say they are interrelated to each other because now in ionic compounds the same kind of defects are named as frankel defect and schottky defect let's talk about the frankel defect first in ionic solids generally the smaller ion which is the cation moves out of its space and occupies an intermolecular space so now what is happening a cat ion again as i said cat ions are positive ions and ions are negative ions so now this cation will move out of its original space which is over here it is moving out of its original space in this case a vacancy is created in its original position why because now over here this particular lattice position is free this interstitial defect is experienced in a new position so now if it this particular ion goes over here then what is happening it is actually taking up space which space is this this space is nothing but intermolecular space and where have we heard about this word before intermolecular space we heard it when we were doing the interstitial effect so if you see over here it is forming a vacancy defect over here and interstitial defect over here both of them are happening at the same time it is also known as dislocation defect because of course one cation has dislocated itself from one point to another point the density of the substance remains unchanged very important because over here because of the vacancy defect the density has decreased but on the other hand over here because of the interstitial defect the density has increased so if density decreases over here density increases over here making sure that overall density remains unchanged it happens when there is a huge difference in size of anions and cations examples is zinc sulfide and agcl which is nothing but silver chloride moving on to schottky defect this kind of vacancy defect is found in ionic solids but in ionic compounds we need to balance the electrical neutrality of compounds so an equal number of anions and cations will be missing from the compound so over here if you see there will be substances which are missing over here it's written cations a positive anions b negative so if you have cations and anions if they are missing they'll be missing in equal numbers and equal amounts it reduces the density of the substance because again we are talking about missing both cations and anions are missing so if i have five cations missing cations positive charge i will have five anions missing anions negative charge that means the positive charge and the negative charge should cancel off each other and eventually what remains should be neutral neutral in what sense electrically neutral it should be electrically neutral in this the size of cations and anions are almost the same that has to be same because you are trying to work out with the 
balancing of the numbers. Types of non-stoichiometric defects, the first is metal deficiency defect. In this, the solids have less number of metals related to the described stoichiometric proportion. So now if I have a particular metal or a particular alloy and it has some particular kind of proportion and if I have lesser number of atoms or ions, then it is considered a metal deficiency defect. The next kind of defect is metal excess defect. There are two kinds of metal excess defects. The first is metal excess defect due to anionic vacancies. Now what is anionic vacancies? Negative ions are anions. This occurs due to the absence of anions from its original lattice or crystal. Therefore, instead of anions, electrons occupy this position. So now you have a proton and a neutron and you have electrons over here in the circuit or in the orbit. And if you have one particular vacancy over here, then it's very easy for this electron to jump over here and occupy this position. And this kind of defect is known as metal excess defect due to anionic deficiencies. The next type is metal excess defect due to presence of an extra cation. So in the past example, we had one anion which was missing, but over here we have extra positive ion that is extra cation. Here on heating the compound, it releases extra cations. These cations occupy interstitial sites in crystals and the same number of electrons goes to the neighboring interstitial site. There is so much to learn about crystalline solids, its structure and its defect. This is just the overview of the point defects. Now this was the point defects we learned. What are point defects? Then we categorize the point defects into various parts. We learned that all three of them, the stoichiometric, Schottky and Frankel, are kind of the same because one is for covalent, the other is for ionic and then we subcategorized them into vacancy defect, interstitial defects and then we talked about different kinds of point defects and the reasons for it. Thank you so much for watching this video. Stay tuned to Ikeda and subscribe to Ikeda.